Hello everybody, today I will show you how to cut out a uh, current limiter built in a PowerX IGPG brick. What I have here is a um, it's the famous CM600 and this is a uh, 1200 volt 600 amp device and this is the FA series which have a current limiter built in. As you can see, we have two lids each for, for each die, which is just put in there with three screws. So if I... It is quite easy to get into the die of these bricks. Um, normally you would have to bend these uh, main connections upwards to pull the cover off, but these are just fastened with three screws and you can take this small metal lid off. If we take a closer look here, we can see the small rectangular uh, square, uh, re yeah, rectangular piece we have down here and here. This is the real-time current control. What this is is it that it's powered from the CE path, as you can see from the two wires over here. And it has a little current mirror, it's basically just an up amp, from which it can uh, surveillance uh, the, the collector emitter current. And in case of it rising two to four times higher than the rated current, it will limit the gate drive to 12 volt DC. So it will not automatically shut off the IDPG, but just to limit the gate drive so that the current through the CE junction falls below a not safe uh, area, but enough to save the IDPG in case of an, a short circuit. This uh, depends on the uh, temperature of the junction and the, uh, the rising edge on the DI-DT curve. So, this is actually my first time trying to do this. Um, what I have chosen is a sharp tweezer. And I will try to just wiggle the wire from side to side until it breaks off. Um, hopefully that will leave a better result than actually trying to mash down a side cutter and try to snap the two wires. So, let's see how, how it goes. Not that easy to actually find the wire. Oh, there it is. And it snapped off nicely. Actually left nothing behind but where it is welded to the contact surfaces. See if I can use the same entry hole. And that worked absolutely perfect. Let's see if I can get this on the camera. As you can see, the two wires are now disconnected. If you compare this area to this area. So if you happen to get a FA series IGPT yourself and you're not too sure where to locate these real-time current uh, control block wires from the CE junction, what you have to do is first look at where does your gate drive enter. Out here we can see we have the emitter connection and we have the gate connection. The gate connection then goes over to a large bridge on the back side here. Here we see two pads which each connect up to the RTC. 
and then connects to the gate of the die. On the other side we have the same situation. The wire connects from the gate to the RCC to the die. Now the two connections from the CE junctions are these two out on the side and these two over here. All the other wires you can see here are the bonding wires from the die up to the large emitter and if you can see just beneath here going a bit to the side is the collector connections which goes just down to the bottom of the die. So with the last of the 32 bond wires wiggled out, as you can see uh, the traces are left in the goop becomes neater and neater. The trick is to lift it up very slowly and try not to introduce too much gap or air into the goop itself. So now my CM600 full bridge is hopefully back in a condition where I can drive my large Tesla coil without getting limited above 1200 amps of, of primary current. And just for entertainment, what you can see over here is a regular SKM400 IGBT brick compared to the sheer size of these CM600 bricks. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that this will help you if you happen to get some FA series bricks and you want to cut out the current limiter control circuit in order to use these uh, there at their true potential in a large Tesla coil. Thanks for watching.